Hello, my name is Glenn and I'm the pastor of New Life Baptist Church. And on behalf of Wendus Allerton, the churches in our town, I invite you to join with us in a short act of worship as we remember Jesus' death on the cross at this time at Easter 2000 years ago. We can't be at the market cross to celebrate today, but we can wherever we are join together in praise and listen to the gospel story and hear what it means for us today. So we invite you to join with us now and we pray that the Lord will bless you and your families this Easter time. Thanks. reading for Good Friday is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 25 to 39. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, 
Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who stood there in front of Jesus, saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Hello and uh, welcome to North Allerton. I imagine many of you are asking questions at this time. And one of the questions I hear so often is how long? How long will we be in isolation? How long before we can meet up with those we love? How long before we can get back to normal? Even big questions like how long can the NHS cope? How long until we know loved ones will survive? How long will it take to save the world? And that question isn't new. The question of doubt and uncertainty has been around forever. In the Old Testament, the Jewish nation were always lamenting, how long until our God saves us? How long until we are free? But when their freedom finally came, most of them missed it. They missed their salvation because they missed their saviour. Jesus came to save the Jews, but not just the Jews, but the whole of humankind. He came to save us from our failures, what the Bible refers to as sin. He came to save us from illness and incapacity. He came to save us from death itself. He came to save the world. And when Jesus came, many missed it. They didn't recognize who he is. They didn't see that this was God himself coming to save the Jews, to save mankind, to save me, to save you. And to bring what we all so eagerly search for now. Because he came to offer freedom. He came to offer life. Today, Good Friday. Remember not so much Jesus' life, but his death, that death on the cross. And his death is marked in all of our towns and cities. The sign of the cross can be seen wherever we go. In the very centre of North Allerton, we have the market cross. We see the signs, but so often we miss the message, like so many who saw him die on that first Friday. I encourage you today, don't miss the signs. This Easter, as we face more time in isolation, as we ask how long before we are free, Jesus asks you how long before you accept the freedom and life that he offers you? How long will you go on avoiding, ignoring, arguing against the life and the love that he offers? Jesus is waiting for you to turn to him. He offers you forgiveness, healing, hope, joy, peace and love. He offers you life. If you want what he offers, turn to him this Easter. Don't wait any longer. Lord, we come to you having journeyed through Holy Week, through a story that for those of us who believe sounds familiar, but somehow, because of where we're at in the world, speaks so powerfully to us today. 
from the cheering, hope-filled crowds on that first Sunday, we've journeyed through the isolation and darkness of the garden in Gethsemane, into the anguish, pain and forsakenness of the cross. Like the disciples of old, our world has now been turned upside down. And as with that first Good Friday, we too feel the darkness of the noon moment, the terror, fear and sense of abandonment, when hope appeared to have disappeared on that cruel cross. We know that Sunday is coming, and with it resurrection, but today we are on Good Friday. And now this year, in this unprecedented time, we come to you in our lockdown state, our isolation, our watching and wondering and praying, and we bring to you, Lord, our hopes and our fears. Hear the cry of our hearts and prayers as we turn to you, God, a God who has declared that nothing will ever separate us from your love, a love that is stronger than death, disease, plague, pandemic. Have mercy upon us, Lord, as we lament and as we grieve for a world that is shaken and broken and wounded. Have mercy and hear our prayer and cry of people and places living with and under the shadow of coronavirus. For the suffering, Lord, and for the dying. For the grieving and the bereft. For all who are lonely, separated and fearful. For all those who are alone, altogether, anxious, struggling. For those who live in fear. For the wounded, the lost, the poor. Those within our town and our nation and beyond our shores to a wider world that cries out to you. Hear their cry and our prayer, Lord. We give thanks and we pray for all those who are on the front line. Doctors and nurses, healthcare assistants, home helps and care workers, scientists, our government, prime minister, government advisers and civil servants, local and regional councillors, teachers and shop workers, all who care and give to help and to heal. Bless them, Lord, in every place where they are. May your love, which is stronger than death and disease, reach out beyond the confines, the restrictions and the necessary measures to touch and transform, to heal and redeem, to strengthen and to comfort. And may the light of your love shine through the darkness of this Good Friday, through its pain and suffering, and lead us into its accomplishment, into the joy and hope and confidence of Easter Sunday, to the victory, Christ's victory over sin and death. From the confinement of all that spoils and mars our lives and the world, to the dawning of a new day, to the coming of your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. For this we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, Lord, encircle us with your love, your peace and protection in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may the peace of all peace keep our hearts and minds safe in the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ, Saviour of the world, Redeemer and our friend. Amen.